Let's return to that, uh, one of our top stories. The spending on aged care in the care economy is set to double over the next 40 years. This is to provide for Australia's ageing population. The intergenerational report lays out the nation's long-term economic outlook and forecasts the number of people over 65 will double and those over 85 will triple. That's between now and 2063. Joining me now is Australian Financial Review political editor Phil Curry. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Tom. Uh, this is sort of put into focus, these regular intergenerational reports, mm. what we sort of know and is creeping off there in the background. It's interesting to note Australia won't grow as fast as we previously thought, but that demographic time bomb still potentially ticks away. Yeah, I mean, you know, the millennials, the millennials are going to be a burden on taxpayers, Tom, in 40 years. Apologies. <laughs> so if you're careful what you're complaining about now because you're going to be on the other end of the complaint in another 40 years. You know, People get older and you can't do anything about it and that's what this report has been saying and uh, has been saying since Peter Costello launched the first one way back 20 years ago. I, th I think my only concern is that they're coming out too frequently, these reports. They were supposed to come out every five years and it seems like every time there's a change of government, whoever the Treasurer is thinks they have to put one out straight away. So it's only been two years since we had the last one and I think they've been devalued. They've lost, they've, lost their, they've lost their scare factor or their clout a bit. Um, you know, Josh Frydenberg was delivering similar messages just a couple of years ago, although he did whitewash that thing to get rid of the scary numbers because they didn't want to panic voters. But, look, it's, it, it's a worthy exercise because it just sort of shows, based on current trajectories, where things are headed and, you know, it helps governments come up with policies and make arguments for policies. You know, we know this government is going to do something fairly significant with aged care. They'll tell us by Christmas. So this lays the sort of groundwork for that. Um, and, you know, Jim Chalmers uses it to underscore his agenda to be, have a more productive economy, whatever that means in terms of policy. So they're a part of the soft sell. Um, they're important. But, you know, always, always treat them a little bit cautiously. Tom, in May, Treasury told us we were going to be in deficit. Three months later, we had a $20 billion surplus. And now they're telling us what they reckon the PBS will cost in 40 years. So, you know... <laughs> Just take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, well, well, you can only, you know, you can, <coughs> these forecasts be, are pretty. Lit. They'll be wrong. We'll see which way they're yeah. wrong. But the warning does well, remain. I'll be I guess dead. I'll be dead. But guess, you'll know. <laughs> you never know. You never know. You eat pretty well. <laughs> um, we have had the Aged Care Royal Commission since the last one, I mm. guess. And what's come into sharp focus here is the government's got more people working per aged care centre. Yes, it's harder to find people, mm. and then the next push is to pay them more. So. Mm does shine a lot on how much this could cost. Much more older people to look after. Mm. And we're already struggling for the workers today. So mm. however that that gets solved, it's it's going to involve, well, you think, money. I mean, there could be all sorts of technological But, but again, this is not new. We've been talking about this for 20 years. There are the ageing population, the dwindling taxpayer base, you know, the whole thing. So it's it's just it's just a, it's just a confirmation of what, you know, the, where the demographics have been heading for the last for the last couple of decades now. You know, this brings into this brings into play things like immigration, when Australia has sort of taken the lazy approach to economic growth by just you know, using population to, to drive economic growth as a principal tool. You know, the last person who tried to populate from within was Peter Costello with the, you know, the baby bonus, you know, one for mum, one for dad, one for the country, and that, that sort of worked. <laughs> well, there was money in it, but you know, we, we tend to fall back on migration, and that, as we see now, brings its own set of problems mm. you know, uh, with housing. And there's a real resentment now towards immigration because of the housing crisis. And this tells us, you know, we're going to bring in the equivalent of Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane over the next uh, 40 years. Yeah, that, that's a lot of people, you know. One thing that's not getting bigger is the land mass or, or the resources. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good we have these forecasts and, you know, but, you know, we just talk about it. Nothing actually ever well, that, needs to be done. <clears throat> it comes on the same day the BCA saying get some tax reform done and there's always some self-interest within groups doing that. But yeah. it does... You know, if we're talking about figuring out a way to raise more revenue and not just slugging people, it does have to come down to productivity and doing sure. things better and smarter. And yeah. that stuff just well, gets kicked down the road seemingly every yeah. time. Yeah, because they just bring more people. little thing gets plucked out well, of it, that's the, it. Josh Frydenberg's take out from 2021 intergenerational report is migration is the key. You know, <laughs> that's, that's the easy way to do it in terms of if you don't want to reform taxes and, mm. and the revenue base and stuff like that. But again, look, you know, there might be a massive war in 10 years and none of this will come true because the whole, you know, the whole scenario will be turned on its head. So, like I said, it's a guide only, but it's not a, you know, it's a, you wouldn't, don't take these figures religiously. Just finally, we've had the Labor Party conference and all the washout mm. from Saturday. Uh, 
how would you? What's your thirty-second summary of what? It, it's Labor's, you know, policy. Look, it was, it was very interesting. It, it, it was fascinating. It was, um, you know, the prime minister was his, his key message was we got to sort of lock in government. You know, don't you know, pragmatism. Don't do anything too silly. And, and uh, you know, at the same time, I think there was probably the undercurrent of the whole thing is how to handle the Greens. You know, they're as worried as the, about the Greens as they are the coalition. Uh, that came through. We saw a lot of young new union leaders and and. Uh, branch leaders and stuff with, with a more progressive agenda calling for more Greens-like policy. So it was a fascinating exercise to be there to mm. see the sort of the, the modern pressures on, on, the, on government. And because they're in government, you know, they've got to be more pragmatic than perhaps some in the left would like them to be. But um, it, was, it was a good exercise. There's been endless talk of the Teals and despite mm. the fact the Greens were the ones that really... Um, well, the Teals got after the well. Liberals, so, yeah. Yeah, so, but the Greens are Labor's Teals. Uh, the, so, <clears throat> Quite an impassioned and personal defence of AUKUS too. He didn't mm. sort of elect to just handball it only to Richard Miles. No. He, he made sure that the timing even got changed of when this would happen. Yes. So he would go there and deliver this address to sort of go, yeah. this is my authority yeah. here. Yes. We can't we can't blow this up. No, that's right. And look, he obviously did that knowing the numbers it was in. It was 80-20, you know, for, for them, for, for AUKUS. He wouldn't have done it if they were going to lose. But it wasn't just the Prime Minister speaking to the, the rank and file or the domestic population. It was also... To send a message to the British and the and the Americans, there have been there have been concerns raised privately about how how fair Dinkum Labor is on AUKUS with all the lead up to conference. So the, mm. the Prime Minister giving it his his imprimatur by you know bringing home the debate as he did on Friday was you know, partly aimed to send a message to the Allies that this is locked in now. All right, we might even talk AFL finals next sure, week. Sure, mate. Just for a treat, <laughs> Phil Curry. Thank you. Ready. <laughs>